The Pecron E3600 LFP is truly one of my favorite and one of the best spec for spec units out on the market right now, especially for portable power. This may be the ultimate cheapest portable solar generator on the market. And I'm gonna go over those details in this video. My name is Ben and this is the Miniman Solar YouTube channel. And I've been testing solar generators and other power equipment for about eight years total. I put these two units through over 50 different data points of testing to see how good it does compared to other units. If you take a look here at the free solar generator comparison chart, I'll have this linked in the description down below. You don't have to pay anything in order to use this. We can see an apples to apples comparison of the E3600 compared to other units, but most in particular for this part, the price. I do my pricing a little bit different because I factor the inverter, battery, and solar. Most people just factor the cost for the battery watt hours, and that's not really a full picture because a solar generator is an inverter, battery, and solar charge controller all put together. But there are three major flaws with it, and I'm going to go over how to fix those flaws at the end of this video. It has a 3600 watt inverter that can peak up to 7200 watts. It is split phase possible, which means you can get both 120 volts and 240 volts from the unit using their split phase box. Each unit has five AC outlets. One of them is a TT30 RV plug. This is rated to a true 30 amp output. And then you have the other normal outlet. So if you wanna use this in an RV, even if it's a 50 amp RV, this has the capability to run that by joining them together with that split phase box. But if you think you're gonna get 3600 watts constantly out of this, you'd be wrong. Because in all of my testing, I ran my light bulb test where I have a very steady constant draw of energy. I was consistently able to pull 3,800 watts from each of these units. So you're actually getting a little bit more than what you bargained for. It'll run more than the advertised 3,600 watts. But to see how efficient the inverter was, I did a 0.2C discharge test. I got a 90% efficiency rating out of the inverter, which isn't the highest in the market, but it's definitely not the lowest. I was able to pull a full 2,770 watt hours from the battery using that 0.2C discharge. It is slightly high on the idle power consumption. It'll consume 46 watt hours per hour. As I ran this down to 0%, I noticed that the AC outlets stayed at a constant 120 volts until the very end once the battery was close to 0%, then it dipped down to 110 volts. The voltage on the AC outlet stayed constant at 120 volts right until the end, and then it dropped down to 110 volts. But when these were fully charged and I ran above the 3600 watts of output, that's when I saw it drop from 120 volts down to 115 volts. A lot of systems will drop as low as 100 volts, so the fact that this stayed at a higher voltage, well above 110 volts was very impressive. But what's so crazy is on a unit so cheap and so simple like this, it has one of the quietest systems out there. Even at a max load, I was only getting around 40 decibels, but commonly was below 30 decibels. But when the fans were in full speed, I averaged around 52 decibels. So you will hear them if you have a heavy load and you're charging from solar, all of that going on at once, it has to cool itself down and you're gonna hear the fans. I always test running a refrigerator just to see how long it will run without any wall charging or solar charging connected. And this ran for a solid 18 hours from 100% down to 0%. If I needed to extend that, I could get an outlet that timer they're like 10 to 15 bucks on Amazon if you really need to stretch how long this battery lasts I highly recommend getting an outlet timer you can use the outlets and the USB-C and DC outlets all at the same time there's only one 100 watt USB-C and then the rest are 18 watt in total there's two USB-C and four USB-A and then you have the normal cigarette lighter port a 30 amp 12 volt output if you're running a fuse block or a lot of DC equipment and then as well another low amperage 12 volt output. There are two wireless charging pads on the top of every unit, which is a cool factor. If you're having this next to you, like next to your bed when you're sleeping and you don't wanna plug in a cord, you can just put your phone on it and wirelessly charge it. Just as a reminder, there's a huge sale going on right now and you can always use my coupon code, which I'll have in the description down below if you already know you wanna get this system. Use those links because it'll save you money and it'll help support the channel. And I help people figure out what systems they need. I do full consultations. If you'd like a consultation and help figuring out what you need, just shoot me an email to info at minutemansolar.com. Each 3600 LFP has a 3072 watt hour battery. You can also have up to four expansion batteries per unit, which will give you a grand total of about 15 kilowatt hours so if you make a 240 volt setup where you have four batteries on each system, you're looking at over 30 kilowatt hours of total battery capacity, which is enough to run all basic needs during a blackout. 
One of the drawbacks that I'm gonna address at the end of this video is the battery expandability. But there is a trick for this that I'll get into in just a minute. The reason they want you to use their batteries is because it has proper communication and it's the same lithium iron phosphate battery. Because of that, you could expect to get well over 3,500 cycles before the batteries reach 80% efficiency. So you could use this every single day, nonstop, 100% to 0%, back to 100% every single day for about 10 years. And at that point, it'll be 80% as good compared to how it was brand new. Dimension wise, it's actually a pretty compact system, only being about 17 inches across the front, 12 inches from front to back, and then 13 and a half inches tall. But it is a little bit of a beast to move around at 79 pounds. This is about as heavy as I want a system to be without wheels. So if you're a little bit wiser in age, you probably want two people to move this around, but I'm able to move this by myself pretty easily. Getting into charging, there are a few unique things we need to know about this system. First is that it uses a proprietary connection to do both 15 amp and 30 amp charging. The beauty of this is that you can fast charge if you have a 30 amp plug, such as an RV plug. If you just have a normal wall outlet, the fastest charge speed you're gonna get is about 1800 watts, and the 30 amp plug is gonna be a little bit over 3200 watts. But it does work as a UPS or an uninterrupted power supply. So say you had your TV, your Wi-Fi, your kitchen, whatever appliances you wanna have plugged in and keep running when the power goes out, this will do that. All you do is you have a wall charger plugged into this, and then you have your fridge, your freezer, your sump pump, your Wi-Fi, whatever you want connected. And as soon as the grid power is lost, this will continue running that without any fluctuation. If you have the 15 amp charger, you can put in 1800 watts and be pulling out 1800 watts. And then same with the 30 amp charger, you can be putting in 3200 watts and pulling out 3200 watts. But if you have the 15 amp charger plugged in and you're pulling 2000 watts, because the input's only 1800, it's gonna turn off the UPS function and only pull 2000 watts. Just like what we expect with every solar generator, this is ungrounded when it's not plugged into a wall outlet because there's no physical ground plugged into the electrical system. But as soon as you plug it in, it is grounded. So if you need to use this for like EV charging or like a plug-in hybrid, those generally require you to have grounding in the system. So once you plug this to an outlet and give it grounding, you can actually charge an EV or a plug-in hybrid off of this off grid. The maximum solar charge speed that you can get in this is 2,550 watts, but it's more realistic to get about 2,400 watts because there are two solar input ports. I don't know why these aren't rated to 1,600 watts each because with a 150 volt charge controller, you can connect four 400 watt solar panels in series and be just below that 150 volt mark. For some reason, Pecron chose to limit it down to 1200 watts, so that's pretty unfortunate. You can still connect four 400 watt solar panels to this and be over paneled. That just means you're gonna prolong how many hours a day you can get a full charge. But I would have preferred to see a 1600 watt charge controller just like we saw in the EcoFlow Delta Pro and other similar systems. Either way, you can get 2400 watts with six 400 watt solar panels, and then there is a small 150 watt input. So all of that combined gets you the 2,550 watts of charging, but there's another hack for this. That's the third thing I'm gonna talk about at the end of this video. Luckily, Pecron listens to customers and they put in a 32 to 150 volt charge controller rather than doing the really lousy 60 volt charge controller that many brands are doing. And it's also a common XT60 connection. So that way you can get any generic adapter that way, if you lose the cord that comes with the system, you can easily replace it for 10 to $20. But the 400 watt bifacial solar panels, I'll have those linked in the description down below, are really good for this, but you have to buy 10 of those in order to qualify for the shipping. They won't ship less than 10 panels. That's the cheapest option on the market. The next best option is if you're looking for a smaller setup, then I would go with the CalSun 200 watt solar panels. And just so you know, they're not sponsored in any way. It's just what I recommend, what I personally use. You can wall charge and solar charge at the same time. So if you needed to charge this from a gas generator and solar at the same time, because the grid power is down, you have that option. One of the things that is missing is the dark start option. Basically, if this runs down to 0%, it's gonna turn itself off. Once solar starts being available again, it's not going to turn the system back on and turn on the outlets. That all has to be done manually. But there are three main systems that I feel like this compares to. And again, this is in the free solar generator comparison chart. You don't need to pay for that to have access to it. I feel like the High Solus Apollo, EcoFlow Delta Pro 3, and the Afri P310 are the top contenders against the Pecron E3600. By a long shot, this is the cheapest option. 
Seriously, I don't think anything beats it on a price per watt, but the Apollo can be found for as low as about 3,700. The Delta Pro 3 is around 2,300, and the Afri P310 is generally about 1,400. There may be different discounts going on, just like right now with the Pecron during Black Friday, so you'll have to double check those numbers. But overall, this is still the cheapest option. And then in comparison, in terms of the inverter output power, this actually has a bigger inverter than the High Solus Apollo, and it's almost one quarter of the price. The Apollo has a 3000 watt, this has a 3600 watt. The Delta Pro 3 slightly beats this one because it's at 4,000 watts versus 3,600, and the A3 P310 is at the same 3,600. The difference here is that the Delta Pro 3 has split phase power built into it, so you don't need two units to get 240 volts. So there is a big advantage there to the Delta Pro 3, but it also costs more than twice as much. By comparison on the base unit battery capacity, all three of those systems beat the Pecron because the Apollo is 5.4 kilowatt hours, the Delta Pro 3 is 4.1 kilowatt hours, and the A3P 310 is 3.8 kilowatt hours. This is just under 3.1 kilowatt hours, but it has that battery expandability, just like the other units do too. And then lastly is the solar comparison. The Apollo has the largest solar input. It'll do 4.4 kilowatts. The Delta Pro 3 can technically go up to 2.6 kilowatts, but it's pretty tricky to do that. So it's similar to the Pecron. And the a 3 p 310 advertises 2000 watts, but it's more likely to be able to get about 1600 watts. And on another note, this is lighter than all three of those systems. The app is very user-friendly and very simple. It allows you to control the system remotely without having to worry about getting close, pushing the buttons, and monitoring it up front. But if you do want to use the screen, there are a ton of options. I've never seen any other system give you all the dirty details of exactly what's going on and program this in any way that you want. So it's very customizable on the screen. You do not have to have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in order to manage this system. There are a lot of pros for this system, especially its affordability, its power output, its expandability with batteries and solar input. It can run a house, it can run an RV, it can run a tent. It'll do everything from little to big power up to 7.2 kilowatts total with two units combined. So if everything heat related in your house is electric, such as an electric water heater, electric range, or even if you have a well pump and then you have an electric dryer, all of those things are gonna use a lot of power, which will make it difficult to run off of 7.2 kilowatts. That's where you would need a bigger system. But this also has a really long warranty compared to most units on the market. This is at five years. But some of the cons of Pecron is that their customer service is pretty limited. They mostly only work by email. I've actually not really had any luck getting them on the phone. Another big gripe of mine is that there's no dedicated power button on here. In order to have the system turned on, I either have to have the AC output turned on or the DC output. So I usually turn on the DC output first because it has a lower idle power consumption because it's basically just running the screen. They do have a dolly in case you need wheels to move this around on flat ground. It would have been a little nice if they had a telescoping handle and wheels built into this, but it's not a deal breaker because it is below 100 pounds. I'd say one of the other cons to this is that these sell out very quickly. It's pretty common that these are on back order because they're priced so well. So if you think you want this system, I would definitely order it sooner than later. I personally love the system. This is my own personal setup. When I travel for jobs with my trailer, this is the number one system that I take. But finally, the three things that I wanted to address in this video about the E3600 that will absolutely make this hands down the best system for 7.2 kilowatts and under. There's three special hacks you can do to this system that will make it hands down incredible. One problem that you have when you use two units for split phase power is that your electrical panel isn't balanced. You have two legs or two phases. And when you have that, one of them will use more power because it's running more things. So when that happens, since this unit's running phase one and this unit is running phase two, this unit will drain faster. That's one of the major advantages of something like the Apollo is even if that happens, unit two will send extra power to unit one. Pretty much no other system will do that. But now there's a special hack. I'm gonna have a dedicated video on how to do these three hacks. So make sure you're subscribed. If you've stayed this long in the video, you're definitely gonna like the next video that comes out about this system. So smash the like button and subscribe. And then let me get through these three points. This is a special adapter cable that's specifically used for going from the main unit to the batteries. If we cut this in half and add our own cables, we can actually run this between two units and it will DC self balance. So you won't get the proper communication, but because batteries like to balance each other, this cable 
with the hack done to it will allow you to balance your system. So that way, if unit one's using more power, it will draw more power from the unit two batteries. Secondly, by using this same cable, we can also hack this to use server batteries. Now I'm gonna be doing a bunch of reviews on some different batteries. I really like the EcoWorthy and the Vader. I also just got some hum sinks that are coming out. So far, they've all been really good and they're all very affordable. So for about the same price as getting the EB3000 for this unit, you can get your own server battery and hack it to where you're adding a five kilowatt hour battery instead of only a three kilowatt hour battery. And then whether I'm using the EB3000 Pecron batteries or my own server batteries, there's always going to be an open port, which would allow me to add my own charge controller put it to a 48 volt output, and then I can connect another 4,000 watts of solar, and that will backfeed the batteries. If I do that, each one of these systems would allow me to have over six kilowatts of solar input, which would be better than any other system on the market for a standalone unit. Now this may void some warranties, but I absolutely love that Pecron is actually on board with helping people expand their systems and make them more powerful. Of course, the best thing to do is use their equipment. That way you know you're not voiding any warranties, you're not gonna have any issues. But if you wanna see how I do these hacks, then make sure you're subscribed for that video. Paired with all of that is an easy way to do a portable solar panel stand that requires no permitting, no paperwork, and it's easy to set up and take down. I'm gonna put that video right here, so if you wanna see how you can use any 400 watt or 200 watt or 325 watt, 590 watt, whatever size solar panel you want, you can use the Miniman solar panel stands and set them up anywhere that you need. Just don't forget to save money right now on the Pecron equipment by using the links in the coupons down below. It's gonna save you a ton.